California Attorney General Javier Becerra penned a letter to the president urging him to keep the DACA program in place. He's also a former member of Congress, and he joins me now. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thank you. So let's start with the argument against DACA. Uh, you have opponents saying, bottom line, President Obama actually went beyond the authority that he has as president when he enacted DACA, that he doesn't have that type of broad authority when it comes to immigration. Your counterpoint to that? The history, our, our record in uh, <laughs> the United States from President Eisenhower to uh, President Reagan to, of course, President Obama, uh, this type of executive action has been used in the past in numbers uh, similar in size, in fact, bigger by President Reagan and President uh, George Bush Sr. than what President Obama has uh, done. And so I don't think there's any doubt. Uh, mm -hmm. I feel very confident that the DACA program is fully lawful. More than that, I think it's fully American. It fits within our values. And it is certainly an overwhelming economic success, not just for the DACA recipients, the dreamers, but for our country and its economy. And to those, particularly those within the Trump administration, who would say, okay, if former President Obama had that type of broad authority on immigration, then doesn't President Trump have broad authority when it comes to, uh, for example, his travel ban? Do you see those two as being similar in terms of having broad authority on immigration? The president has broad authority at all times, uh, but he doesn't have broad authority to violate the Constitution. The problem with the Muslim travel ban was that it violated the, the uh, provisions of the Constitution whether it was the First Amendment or the 14th Amendment. The DACA program does not violate any constitutional rights uh, that people might have. And so there's a very big difference between uh, a constitutional overreach in a Muslim travel ban and the DACA program, which is very similar to what President Reagan did and President George Bush Sr. did when they were presidents in trying to help address an immigration system with an immigration system that was broken even then. Uh, so I, I think there's a big difference, and that's why I feel very confident that if we had a chance to defend the uh, DACA program in court, we would prevail. And, and before we get to that, because I do want to discuss your strategy moving forward, to those who would argue, hey, you know, we came here legally, and allowing, having this DACA program actually allows people uh, to stay, and that is not fair to those who did come here legally, who want to work, who want to go to college. What do you say to that counter argument? Chris, I don't think anyone has any doubt that our immigration system is woefully broken and needs to be mm -hmm. reformed. And many of us have tried. I was in Congress for 24 years and made an effort and came pretty close on a bipartisan uh, deal. Uh, but I, I think at the same time, we also are rational human beings. We know that children uh, don't get to do and say what they necessarily want or think is best for themselves. That's why you have your parents. And so many of these uh, dreamers came when they were very young. All of them came when they were minors. And so it wasn't their choice in most cases to come to this country. And certainly most had little uh, to do with intending to violate any particular law. So they grow up in America knowing nothing but America as their home. And now they're being told that they may be deported when in fact they've proven to be great successes, valedictorians in their high school, going to some of the best universities, and I becoming you, great professionals. I want to just get a sense of your strategy moving forward. Uh, we don't know what the president's going to announce. If he does decide to rescind DACA, to scrap it, to get rid of it, what would your next course of action be? Would you take legal action or uh, would you try to go through Congress to try to get something done legislatively, as you were just discussing? Kristen, we've explored every option, whether mm -hmm. it's court, going to court, or trying to work with Congress. Uh, we will be prepared, once the president announces his actions, uh, to use every tool that we have at our disposal to try to protect the people of California. 200,000 of the 800,000 Dreamers uh, live in California who've qualified for DACA, and we've seen the success of the program. We want people who want to build our state, make it grow, create jobs. We want them to stay and, and, and make it successful even more so. That's why we're the sixth largest economy in the world, uh, just one state. And so we'll do everything we can 
to defend a program that's been a, an American success and that has proved to California to really be helpful in moving forward an agenda that's made California such a success as well. And Attorney General Becerra, as we've been discussing throughout the hour, obviously the politics of this have changed because of what is happening in Texas. Do you think, uh, are you hearing that that is going to impact the president's decision? Uh, you obviously just wrote this op-ed about this. Uh, do you anticipate that that turns up the political pressure on the president? Well, it certainly brings to life what we're trying to say, that uh, we're, this isn't just policy and it's certainly not politics. These are people. These are real lives. And now it becomes real when you start to take a look at the folks in Houston, some of them perhaps dreamers who are impacted. This is real stuff. And I think most people understand that this is a time for us to be generous, to help the folks in Texas and Louisiana and even other states now who are facing these floods and loss of home and everything else. And I don't believe anyone would say, let's start separating and distinguishing between someone who's uh, been a, a citizen born in this country and someone who's a, a young dreamer who knows nothing but America as home, but because they came with their parents without documents, we're going to let them go ahead and try to make it on their own. It, it points out why reforming immigration is so important, but why the DACA program as well should continue forward. All right. Thank you, Attorney General Becerra. Really appreciate your time. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.